very good. I would welcome you all to please uh, take a seat and get comfortable. Um, my name is uh, Michael Felicaro, I'm professor and chairman of the Department of Nurse Anesthesia in the School of Allied Health Professions at Virginia Commonwealth University, and it is my extreme pleasure to welcome each one of you. I was getting text messages last night from some, some of the students. Uh, um, I know Aaron sent me one. I was getting them at the, oh, please, Dr. Pellicaro, don't cancel the ceremony because of snow. And you see, the students forget one thing. Even though I've been in Virginia for 20 years, uh, my home is Buffalo, New York. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you when it snows. It hasn't snowed yet since I've been in Virginia. I will tell you when it snows. But we would not cancel this. Uh, but again, I thank you all for coming out in such inclement weather uh, to join us for this celebration. And uh, again, uh, what this is, is this is our awards and recognition ceremony. And many of you have just witnessed the official university graduation at the Siegel Center, where their degrees were actually conferred. But we've assembled this afternoon uh, so that we can acknowledge and celebrate the academic achievements of the class of 2017, all seated here before you. Uh, they have all completed their degree requirements and are opposed next to write their professional national certification examinations and join this nation uh, as the newest certified registered nurse anesthetist. I want to begin by telling you a little bit about um, our program and our department here at VCU, as well as a little bit about the specialty for, uh, for some, of the, uh, some of you out there who may not be as familiar as our graduate students are today. A nurse anesthetists have been providing care in the United States for well over 200 years, and they first provided anesthesia to the wounded soldiers during the Civil War, and in fact, throughout every conflict in this nation's history, nurse anesthetists have proven themselves as essential anesthesia providers caring for the sick and wounded soldier. CRNAs, as we call them, um, are anesthesia professionals who participate in over 40 million anesthetics each year uh, in the United States and are key providers in the majority of all rural hospitals, enabling those facilities to offer obstetrical, surgical, pain, trauma, uh, and, and uh, outpatient services. CRNAs provide anesthetics to patients in collaboration with anesthesiologists, surgeons, dentists, podiatrists, and other, health, uh, and other qualified healthcare professionals. And as advanced practice nurses themselves, CRNAs practice with a high degree of autonomy and responsibility and professional respect and practice in every setting in which anesthesia is delivered including traditional hospital surgical suites, obstetrical delivery rooms, critical access hospitals, ambulatory surgery centers, and the offices of dentists, podiatrists, and many others. Before these students were able to enter through our doors, they first had to attend four years of nursing school and earn a recognized baccalaureate degree. Following this, they were then required to gain experience in critical intensive care unit patient care settings. And quite often it takes a registered nurse several years of general nursing experience before they can even enter the critical care units themselves. Finally, the applicant must score high on graduate admissions tests and compete well with other candidates. And in fact, our department turns away three to five candidates for every one that it accepts. Once accepted, these graduate nurse anesthesia students spend near three years in a demanding program of study and a clinical residency leading to a master's degree and now most if not all stay even longer to earn a doctorate in nurse anesthesia practice. Our master's program entails 72 credit hours of graduate work and our doctorate adding an additional 33 credit hours of work. Studies include work in pharmacology, in physiology, in medicinal chemistry, pathophysiology, patient safety, leadership, research methods, and not to forget the bulk of study in anesthesiology. Graduate students also spend near 1,700 hours in the operating room of giving anesthetics uh, to patients uh, from newborns to geriatrics. After all is said and done, most of these students seated before you have spent eight to 10 years in higher education to see this day. And while most of the credit belongs to those students who are seated here with us, we know that much support has been derived from families and significant others and friends who have gathered here to celebrate with our graduate students. And on behalf of Virginia Commonwealth University's Department of Nurse Anesthesia, I want to thank all of you for supporting your loved ones through this arduous process. The class of 2017 would not be here today were not for the labors of many others. And it's my pleasure to introduce the didactic faculty and staff members of the Department of Nurse Anesthesia. 
and I will call them out, and they can stand as I call their names. Uh, first, I would like to call upon uh, Dr. Chuck Biddle, uh, uh, professor, associate professor, Dr. Suzanne Wright, assistant professor, Dr. Kurt Wilson, <laughs> assistant professor, Ms. Beverly George Gay, assistant professor, for a few years 
And my biggest fault while I was uh, chair of that department is I'm the idiot that hired Marjorie. <laughs> she has been the worst hire of my life. <laughs> And I don't know why, in God's name, you ever created a scholarship under her name. I pity the poor person that has to accept that thing. But with that said, I will say to you, it's really been my honor to be your dean. And this dean's not going to be here much longer. So it, it's wonderful that I've had the opportunity to, to uh, say, uh, well done and uh, you all will do well in the future. And I uh, probably have one more to go, but you see that big monstrosity that's being built down on Lee Street? That's ours. And it's gonna have a new name, ladies and gentlemen. It's gonna be called the College of Health Professions. And I think that's synonymous with what we are. So with that said, I bring greetings from Mike Ralph, the president of this university, and I want you to know he has been our greatest supporter. And that building wouldn't be built without Mike Rao doing what he did. I kind of followed him around, <laughs> worked, but uh, it, uh, we we're getting that building. And you need to know that that building is totally state funded. Uh, they are paying $76 million to, to build that building. We're slicing the last, the top floor for $10.6 million. And we'll, we, the school will pay for that. We will make it. Or the college will pay for it. But with that said, the biggest thing is congratulations to you all. I hope to see you around the bend. Hopefully not as a patient. But first and foremost is beat Navy. Thank you. <laughs>
So you all, I congratulate you on behalf of um, Emily Doherty, who was not able to be here uh, in, from Abingdon, on behalf of Dr. Um, Maria Hirsch from Roanoke, who has hired four um, Southwest graduates, and uh, she is so sorry that she's not able to be here, but wishes you all the best and um, most un and her congratulations, as well as uh, Dr. Lori Nesbitt from Northern Virginia, who <coughs> made it as far as uh, Northern Virginia. So he flew in yesterday to Northern Virginia, but he wasn't able to make it here today because of the snow. So he also wishes you um, the best and um, congratulates you all on your graduation. So for all the distance um, sites, you all are an elite group, um, as well as the entire class. But um, you have some wonderful graduates in, in, in all of your areas. Uh, they're all either excellent, outstanding um, clinical faculty for us, or they are nurse um, anesthesia chief, I should say chief nurse anesthetist in areas, as well as um, uh, just outstanding folks um, representing VCU in a, in a manner that's honorable. And we expect you, uh, the same of you. So congratulations. For over 45 years, the Department of Nurse Anesthesia has relied heavily on the voluntary services of many adjunct faculty who have borne the brunt of much of the didactic and clinical teaching work. Uh, the VCU Medical Center has made a significant contribution in time and efforts of their professional staff. In particular, I would like to acknowledge the tremendous efforts made by the many VCU Medical Center's anesthesiologists and nurse anesthetists. Indeed, these talented professionals have always been there freely sharing and imparting knowledge to VCU graduate students. And we are pleased today to have Dr. Chris Morgan, clinical instructor, join us representing the VCU health system. Dr. Morgan, please. Good afternoon. Um, I'm not a great public speaker because I get them one-on-one -on -one in the OR, and then I talk a lot. <laughs> That's why they're giggling, because it's non-stop talking for about eight hours straight. Um, I'm here on behalf of Dr. Charles Moore, who is the Chief Nurse Anesthetist at VCU. He did want me to share some words with you, so I'm going to read them to you. Congratulations to the class of 2017. You have worked hard, sacrificed much, and learned a great deal over the last 27 months. You should all be very proud of your accomplishments, and as you enter this new phase, I would like to pass on some very simple words of wisdom that were given to me many years ago and has helped guide my career. One, always consider and be prepared for the worst case and be grateful when it doesn't occur. Don't be the first to try something new and the last to get something up. Treat all patients the way in which you want to be treated. It is said it is better to be lucky than good, but it is even better to be conscientious, lucky, and good. With that, he wishes you a congratulations, as do I, to all of you, even the ones that I didn't have a chance to meet or teach in Richmond. Um, but I want to thank you all for, I guess, showing up and hanging out with me and letting me be there on your path to being a now CRNA. So I'll be happy if I end up in the hospital and I look up and see your face as the last one before I fall asleep. <laughs> um, and to that, sorry, this is my first time on stage. <laughs> but uh, congratulations and congrats to all the families and loved ones that are here because it's a long journey as well for you all. So congratulations again. Chris said this is his first time up on stage. I remember when he walked up here and got his diploma, guys. So it was not that long ago. Uh, so again, uh, uh, there's a perfect example of one of your alumni who's going on to accomplish great things in giving back uh, to, to uh, young folks who follow him. So it's a, it's a wonderful thing. Thank you, Chris. It's now my pleasure to introduce the president of the class of 2017. Over two years ago, Ms. Tressy Turner was elected by her classmates to assume a vital role in our department structure. And she is the key liaison between her classmates, the faculty, and the administration. And I join the entire faculty and staff in thanking Tressy for not only serving in this important role, but also for her dedication and enthusiasm as class president. It's now my pleasure to introduce uh, Ms. Tressie Turner, president, class of 2017. Tressie.
So, um, just fair reminder, the last time I spoke at a graduation, there was a tornado warning during my, the middle of my speech. So, at this time, I would like for everyone to turn around, look around, find your nearest exit, because the nearest exit may be behind you. <laughs> First, I would like to thank God for allowing me this honor to speak today. Second, I would like to thank all of our special guests, family, friends, faculty, and staff for sharing this special occasion with the class of 2017. I want to thank my classmates for electing me class president. Serving as your president is a very special honor to me. I am extremely proud to be the first black class president in the storied history of the nursing anesthetist program here at VCU as well. Wow. Can you all believe we have been 28 months? 28 months. It's been a long journey, but we've made it and we're here. Applying and receiving an invitation to interview, and are arriving at our interview, ready to impress everyone with our charm, and then at the end of that interview, Dr. Fala Carroll coming back in to wish us well wishes, and then saying, hey, we interviewed five to six people for each spot. I don't know about anyone else, but my heart sank just a little bit as I walked to my car. I remember our first day of orientation as we discussed receiving our acceptance call from Ms. Goodwin. The majority of us worked the night before, so we were awakened by her call. Some of us thought it was a dream, calling back to confirm, while others held off on announcing their acceptance until they received that official letter. This journey was different because we, became, we came into this program as adults, pretty much set in our ways. But, as we, but we all possess the desire to learn and the strength to prevail. Quickly realizing that we had to expand beyond our comfort zone and stick together to accomplish the monumental task of which we now sit at the threshold, which is now Certified Registered Nurse Anesthetist. I have enjoyed the rich and unique experiences of getting to know all of my classmates here at VCU. Through our time together, we have built unbreakable bonds, or as Grey's Anatomy calls it, we have found our person. We have been there for each other during sad times, comforting those who've lost loved ones, and talking each other off the cliff. Or as, um, as one of us dealt with the, as Dr. Davis calls it, the imposter syndrome. And we contemplated giving up because, hey, being an ICU nurse, it wasn't that bad. But we did not quit. Instead, we celebrated engagements, weddings, as well as the joy of some of us becoming mothers and fathers again, and for the first time. We have had some fun times together. I've loved the memes and jokes that we posted that, we, that made us laugh, that expressed exactly what we were going through. And for our sister sites, let's just say, it was best that administration kept the sites apart until anatomy camp and airway lab. <laughs> because the memories we have created, we will tell our children, friends, and family, and, well, not all of them, but some of them. Some of them will just use the Las Vegas rule on those. <laughs> for, but for as much as we've shared, we knew we had to work twice as hard. Always remembering to keep each other on task, to stay on top of homework assignments, be prepared for exams, aware of cl um, class changes, and a big one, clinical preceptor preferences. This has truly been a one-of-a-kind experience, and I can now see why this program is the best in the nation. What other schools give, what other schools give you the chance to publish articles, speak at a national conference, and participate in surgical missions? And these are only a few of the opportunities and extracurricular um, activities available to us. I cannot thank the faculty enough for being awesome educators and taking time out of their busy schedules to lend an ear whenever needed. As we leave here today, most of us will continue our journey in our local areas, but there are some of us moving away to start anew. I hope we all keep in touch, and just the FYI, at this last NAFA conference, I did promise our AANA um, president, Bruce Weiner, that I will get everyone back here in two years for the NAFA conference. So go ahead and mark it on your calendars. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to close by saying there's a good reason they call these ceremonies commencements. Graduation is not the end. 
it is the beginning of a next of a new chapter for us. So again, congratulations to 20, um, class of 2017. We did it. Well, Tressie was congratulating you guys, uh, uh, just for those in the audience. Um, another round of applause for Tressie to congratulate her on the new position um, down at Duke. She will be uh, going to practice um, shortly when she graduates. <laughs> so we'll be playing basketball, I guess, against the students in front of the future. At this time, we will present the certificates of completion and school pins to members of the class of 2017. And we'll, prevent, we'll present the master's uh, graduates first, followed by our doctor of nurse anesthesia practice graduates. And I would like professors. Uh, Dr. Davis and Dr. D'Amico to join me. Dr. Davis, our Vice Chair for Clinical Studies, will read the names of our Master's students, and Dr. D'Amico, um, our Director of Professional Practice, will read the names of our Doctor of Nurse Anesthesia Practice graduates. As your name is called, please come forward. Dr. Drain, would you like to assist me? <laughs> Jacob Anderson.
April Ritter. ceremony, you did see the, uh, uh, there were two graduates from the School of Allied Health Professions, a PhD in Health Related Sciences program that were nurse anesthetists, and we want to uh, uh, honor those two folks here, and so Dr. Davis. Mary Beth Massey. Said that it got us thinking, and lo and behold, the program was established 
and she has been a vital, vital faculty um, out there in that area. And now she is running her own program up in Indiana. <laughs> Indiana Indianapolis, Indiana. And so, uh, um, again, the, the wheel goes round. The other young lady, I happened to, uh, again, I told you I came from New York State, um, and I met her when she was a student nurse anesthetist back about mid-90s, Mary Beth. And we went to an anesthesia meeting, you know, the assembly school faculty, and I was at my usual spot sitting by the pool with a cigar, and Mary Beth came over and sat down next to me, and we started talking, and I said, you know, Mary Beth, you ought to really think if you want to go into education about getting your PhD, and here she is today. So again, the wheel turns. Uh, we do have a couple of, of, of gifts for you. And the first, this um, this goes to oh, this goes to you, Lois. This is a very very nice uh, a frame, and you also get a a nice pin. And uh, you're supposed to get a really nice. Pen. Here's a pen. Here's one. <laughs> Where Mary Beth, you get a very nice VCU pen, and you don't get a frame because we sent it to her. <laughs> and so, again, our congratulations to the two of you, and, and thank you for representing Virginia Commonwealth University so well. Mary Beth is also a program director up in Maine. So I got it right. Okay. So again, you, you see uh, the, the quality of the folks uh, that are coming out of your program. So uh, I ask you, the graduates, take a look. Someday you'll be standing here as well, I'm sure. Thank you, friends. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, next, we are going to start our award section. And we are going to first begin with the Agatha, uh, Agatha Hodgins CRNA Memorial Award. And Agatha Hodgins was, a distinct, was distinguished as an excellent CRNA educator and clinician and a leader in the promotion of nurse anesthesia as its own professional specialty. Ms. Hodgins' career began at the turn of the century when delivering anesthesia was neither an esteemed nor especially well-paid position. Agatha was appointed by a surgeon, Dr. George Cryle, to administer anesthetics to his patients at Lakeside Hospital in Cleveland, Ohio. He recognized that her exceptional abilities and talents as a nurse were qualities that were valued in delivering safe anesthesia at the head of the surgical table. And Agatha was also the founder and first president of the American Association of Nurse Anesthetists. And this award is presented annually to the graduating nurse anesthesia students who complete the program with the highest GPA. And uh, last year, I think we had six or seven, and this year, we have, I think, 14. So will the following people please line up the stage. And again, uh, as I call your name, please come forward. Ladies and gentlemen, these people completed, again, one of the most rigorous programs at Virginia Commonwealth University, our program, with a perfect 4.0 GPA. So please, Ashley Borlaus, please come forward.
Megan Lunchick.
Ms. Ashley Warlock. dissemination and education of physician and nursing obstetrical providers using evidence-based bundles that target the three major causes of maternal mortality will in fact save lives. Congratulations to Bradley Keytron. Well done.
and the DNAP Leadership Award is uh, Macaulay of Dorset. challenges fellow alumni to continue the legacy. And that's what I want to challenge each of you to do today. 
As you go out, as you begin to lecture uh, in the classroom, as you begin to work in the clinical setting, uh, as you inspire students, as you inspire your colleagues, as you publish your work in journals, be the legacy, live the legacy, continue it on. That is now our responsibility, yours and mine. I encourage you also, of course, to join the Alumni Advisory Council. We would love to have you as a member. The current Alumni Advisory Council at VCU has 17 members uh, that span in graduating years from 1970s, late 1970s to current, uh, and we represent over 900 alumni graduates from the program. The program's alumni are caring for patients across the United States, uh, but high concentrations of VCU alumni are in Tennessee, North Carolina, Ohio, Texas, Washington, and New York, and one-third of Virginia Commonwealth University's nurse anesthesia alumni stay and work and live right here in Virginia, in the Commonwealth. Approximately 21% of our alumni have opted to prepare themselves to become leaders in education, management, and the clinical setting by obtaining Doctor of Nurse Anesthesia practice degrees. And several, such as the two we saw today, uh, Ms. Mary, Mary Beth Massey and uh, Dr. Luis, have uh, Lois, I'm sorry, Dr. Uh, Lois, have gone on to improve the state of the science of the profession uh, by becoming a PhD researcher. Uh, and they're an inspiration to me, and I'm sure many of you. The council uh, wants to welcome you to the ranks, guys, of the VCU alumni. VCU alumni are not only excellent anesthesia providers, they are innovators, they are entrepreneurs, they are researchers, they are publishers, they are leaders in healthcare and in education. Welcome to the ranks. The council's goal is simple, to cultivate lifelong advocates for the department through thoughtful and strategic efforts that have a positive impact on the future of the department. The council accomplished this with two groups, basically. I'm not going to read the summary, I just want to tell you what they do. The first group, uh, the development group, just has fun, okay? Uh, last year, for example, they started the inaugural annual uh, alumni gathering event. They hosted it at the Boathouse. If you're not familiar with that, it's a beautiful riverfront view, uh, venue just right down here, uh, not a few miles from here on the river. And it was wonderful. We got people together from years and years of uh, graduates from the department and just had a blast. So if you're interested in working on those kind of projects uh, with the Alumni Council, with Heather Millar, with the school's faculty, the Alumni Council would be a great place for you to get involved and do that. Number two, the Alumni Council has a committee called the Awards and Nominations Committee. That committee gets together to recognize and celebrate excellent, outstanding alumni from Virginia Commonwealth University, of which there are many. There are many. And one of them today, I am honored, uh, honored and humbled and inspired uh, to present her award. She was nominated to the VCU Alumni Advisory Council by uh, Dr. Jim Embry, or Dr. James Embry. Many of you may know him uh, in the Richmond area. And I would like to uh, just simply read his nomination, if I could, uh, because I don't want to miss anything. She, this, this lady uh, is an incredible inspiration and has had an incredible career and impact on the profession of nursing anesthesia and uh, just society in general. Dr. Embry says, I would like to nominate Kathy A. Harrison, DNAP, MSN, CRNA, for the Nurse Anesthesia Alumni Award. She is a 1979 graduate from the VCU Nurse Anesthesia Program, receiving a certificate in nurse anesthesia. Her other education includes a BA in Healthcare Administration from Graceland University, a Master of Science from the University of Phoenix, and a Doctor of Nurse Anesthesia Practice from Virginia Commonwealth University. She values the importance of education and has imparted her knowledge to nurse anesthesia students and other professional learners. Dr. Henry says, I believe she should be evaluated on her professional career, military service, and leadership roles. During her 38-year career, Kathy has served in many leadership roles. As a civilian, she worked at Chippenham Medical Center for 19 years and served as a chief nurse anesthetist for three years. During her time period at Chippenham, she supervised and educated many nurse anesthetist students on the full spectrum of anesthesia care. I just learned today that one of those students was Dr. Nikki D'Amico. So we can thank Dr. Harrison for the wonderful addition that Dr. D'Amico has been to our program, for what she meant to me, and for what she means to each of you. Uh, she, Dr. D'Amico told me that Dr. Harrison was actually the reason she stayed in Richmond. Right? What a, what a, what a great uh, testament to Dr. Harrison. She says, uh, her March two thousand since March two thousand seven, she has been a sole anesthesia provider of dental anesthesia services, and her reputation as a dental anesthesia provider has led her to being 
appointed as the inspector for the Virginia Department of Health Professions Enforcement Division to evaluate Virginia Dental Office's sedation practices. Her role is to verify that Virginia dental practices offer IV sedation following state mandated standards that provide safe anesthesia care. Kathy has a 26 year history with the United States Navy Reserves with a 2017 retirement. During her military career, she served on active duty at Portsmouth Naval Medical Center and Launchstall Regional Medical Center in Germany. Additionally, she was the first to serve, this is incredible, she was the first reserve CRNA to be board appointed to the position of executive officer for operational health support unit, Camp Lejeune, and commanding officer of operations health support unit, Bethesda Walter Reed Military Medical Center. She completed a distinguished military career, retiring with the rank of captain. Kathy's largest accomplishment at her involve, in her, is her involvement with the Virginia Association of Nurse Anesthetists. She has helped, held multiple positions within District 5, and it, that has led to her becoming involved at the state level. Kathy has served as the, uh, the van of the Virginia Association of Nurse Anesthetists treasurer, president-elect, and president. However, her longest VANA position was with the Government Relations Committee. As its chairperson and committee member, she maintains an active role on the Government Relations Committee, most recently following legislation action to license anesthesia assistance in Virginia. Kathy played a key role in providing data to the Department of Health Professions, which resulted in the AA legislation being defeated. Her participation with the VANA cannot go unnoticed. Kathy Harrison is a model for other nurse anesthetists to emulate. She is an alumna who exhibited the highest ideals of the VCU Nurse Anesthesia Program, and she has an outstanding reputation as a practitioner, a military officer, as well as an active participant in VANA. I hope that each of you will agree uh, and join me with excitement, humility, and inspiration as we present Kathy Harrison, uh, the 2017 Outstanding Alumnus Award.
much on the right of campus. And we will be uh, recognizing uh, Jason Clark um, on behalf of uh, his great leadership um, and everything that he has passed on to us um, as students. So we would like to recognize Jason Clark. Good morning. 
came, he um, heard that there would be more snow he, down here today, and he was afraid that he would not be able to drive back and um, fly out on time. So, um, but he did send a message as well. And again, he made the first leg of the trip. So they, they all really, really tried. So. Um, uh, he says, I appreciate your passion and commitment to making the NOVA campus stand out. He wanted to remind you that this is just the beginning of the next chapter. Graduation is not the final chapter. Um, he'd like you each to take pride in the fact that you've, uh, uh, you have accomplished something big um, and should take time to thank your loved ones because without their support, this could not be done. Take a minute. Um, he wrote it, he didn't write it in the first person, so I'm like trying to it. Uh, take a minute uh, um, that you need to continue uh, to work hard and strive uh, to be the very best at everything that you do. Not just being a CRNA. Life is unpredictable and sometimes not fair, and we cannot control everything. Um, he had a significant loss in his family. And um, the, the NOVA students are very much aware of what happened. I think all of us are. So um, uh, it, it was a tragedy, and, um, but he is overcoming. He'd also like to say um, thanks to the leadership at VCU um, for placing <coughs> such qualified applicants into the Northern Virginia um, clinical sites. Um, he says, overall, be kind to others. Take the time to make a difference. Don't deviate from your moral compass, and remember that the right thing is not always the easiest. Live and love more, work less. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Tell that to this <laughs> to call upon Colonel Watson 
to present this award, which is in his name. So Herb, if you'd please come on up. took in. I'm not going to go through our notes, my, uh, my notes because 
our time is short. But I will tell you, uh, if she always also may have remembered what I told you at that time about my philosophy on victims versus volunteers. <laughs> yes, I said the world has victims out there. It certainly does. And uh, it is our obligation and our responsibility to care for folks who are not as fortunate as us. That is our responsibility. That's your responsibility. But you, my friends, each and every one of you, no victims among you. You're all volunteers. Each and every one of you are volunteers. And what I mean by that is you choose wisely. Okay, you choose wisely. Um, and I'll use my good friend Kurt. He's not here. He and I smoke cigars, for which we shouldn't do. And he complained to me once about how miserable he was at his job. He worked for a, a big company here in town that makes a lot of credit cards. And we were fishing, and he was miserable, and he said he had to work. And I said, quit. He said, well, no, I have to work. I said, why? He says, quit. He goes, well, I have to work. I says, look, I says, you can sell your big house, and you can sell your new truck. I says, we, you can buy a cheap John boat, and instead of smoking a $10 Rocky Patel, we can go to JR's and get a $2 smoke. He said, well, I don't want to do any of that. I said, so do you really have to work, or did he make a choice to work? So many people today are mixing up victim versus volunteer. Don't be part of that crowd. Don't be part of the crowd that says, woe is me, okay? Because you have tremendous opportunities in front of you. And please, okay, look at the choices you have made. The last thing I'll conclude with is, it was about a year, year and a half ago, I was having my house painted, and I interviewed three different painters to come and paint my house. I was checking them all out, these types of things, you know, you want to make sure you get the right person that doesn't mess up your house. And then, I watch what happens each and every day in the operating room to each of you. Perfect strangers walk up to you and hand you their child or their loved one without knowing anything about you, without knowing anything about your background, who you are, or what you do. I want you to think about that for a moment. Think about the trust reposed in you. Think about the responsibility. Think about the privilege that is, and it is a Tremendous, tremendous privilege. So I'd like to congratulate you and tell you this, that you know, again, you're volunteers, each and every one of you. Give back to your specialty, okay? You're volunteers, but you really, really are not entitled to anything. Now that you got your degree, you can go take the boards, but you're not entitled to be successful. What you're entitled to is an opportunity to go out there and make a difference. And what you do with that opportunity now will determine, okay, what your future is. And I am very, very confident that it will be a bright future. And again, I've joined Chris, and I have been in the, in the position, but if I or anyone in my family should ever need an anesthetic, I would be comforted to see one of your faces at the head of the operating table. And with that, again, I wish everyone a safe holiday season, safe travels on this snowy day, and again, congratulations, Class of 2017. Oh. Oh. And one last thing, one last thing. I asked Tressy if she would uh, 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 read a response from Jerry uh, uh, for his award. So I, I missed that, but again, Jerry did send Tressy something last night, and I got a text from her, so go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Here we go. So it says, Dear students, family, friends, and faculty, I deeply regret not being able to be there to share in this very important day in your lives. On your first week of orientation, I informed you that this was a tough program. I also noted that you had the best faculty, the best staff, and the best lab simulation guide on the planet Earth. You guys applied and got accepted to the number one nurse anesthesia program in the U.S. To me, that told me you guys were not only ready, and man, were you ready to pass this program with flying colors. I am deeply proud of each and every one of you guys, especially the distant folks. I know how hard this can be for you. I deeply love each and every one of you guys. I knew some of you more than others, but that didn't mean I wasn't pulling for you. I tried to be your biggest cheerleader. I was with you day one and normally with you till the last day. Due to the accident, I lost the best job of my life, working with the best faculty ever and with the best students ever. The biggest hurt was not being able to be with my students, watching you grow in a program till this day, your long-awaited day of graduation. Now I want you guys to stand up. <laughs> I 
Now I will know about this if you do, do not follow directions. <laughs> As, fill your lungs, and when I tell you, I want you to give the biggest yell possible to self-congratulate yourselves. You deserve it. And congratulations once again from me, and especially to my wonderful grandniece, Kendall Satterwhite. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> Class of 2017, you are officially dismissed. Congratulations.